I verify that it's time to change my dressing and also access my implantable port that my patient has. So first of all, I have already removed the dressing, the old dressing, and now I'm going to begin my sterile procedure of cleansing the area and then going ahead and accessing the implantable port. So I'm gonna wash my hands. I verified my patient's identity with the um, wristband and the EMR. I'm going to place on my mask, because again, we don't want to be transferring any contaminants to our area um, that we're going to be working with. My patient as well, if they're tolerating it, they can wear a mask, or again, they can turn their head away from the site that you're working on just to prevent any contamination. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead I wash my hands, I'm gonna place on clean gloves because I'm just going to assess the site and I'm also going to make sure that I can palpate and locate my port. So I have my clean gloves on and I'm looking at the area and the implantable port is located right here. So you can see it is underneath the subcutaneous tissue. So I know where it is. I'm also looking at the skin and noting if there's any complications. If there is, I would notify the provider. Okay, so I've accessed it, I'm assessing the area and my assessment is pretty negative for any complications. So now I'm gonna remove my gloves and I'm gonna perform hand hygiene and I'm gonna apply sterile gloves. Now all of my um, equipment I already have on the sterile field and I made sure I checked the um, expiration dates on all of my, my packaging and I also provided on my sterile field normal saline flushes and one heparin flush per, per protocol. When I'm done accessing, I'm going to go ahead and flush the area with heparin per policy. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put on my sterile gloves. As always, I'm explaining to my patient what I'm doing, and verifying if there are any questions and answering those. And I'm provided for privacy as well. And as always, you want your patient in a comfortable position and the bed at a working height. So now I have my sterile gloves on, so I'm gonna go ahead and cleanse my area for 30 seconds. And follow your agency policy on your cleaning. So I've done that for 30 seconds, I let that dry. And then now I am looking at my non-coring needle. So I have that here in my kit. So I'm attaching the needleless connector. And like I said, everything is sterile here. So I am going to make sure that I have my saline flush as it is labeled. And I'm going to attach it to the needleless connector. And I'm going to flush. As you can see, I flushed it. Okay, and then now I'm going to go ahead and access, because it's cleansed. I'm going to remove the covering on the needle. I'm going to access my port and put this in at a 90 degree until the, the needle hits the base of the port. Make sure this is clamped. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put my dressing over it. Now I'm gonna use some chlorhexidine antiseptic. Just around the site here. I'm gonna place a tegaderm over. Okay. 
Now I can remove my sterile gloves and I'm gonna go ahead and label my dressing. <coughs> so I would go ahead and put the date, my initials, and place this on my dressing. In there. Okay, so now that we have our dressing change on, uh, and I've also primed this line, I'm gonna go ahead and we're going to um, lock this. So I need to go ahead and do my minimum of five second bigger scrub on my needleless connector. And then I'm gonna flush it. First aspirate, then flush with normal saline. And then when you pull back, you aspirate for blood, you get blood return. Then you can go ahead and flush with your recommended amount of saline, then lock. And then if your policy recommends locking it with the uh, heparin solution, you can follow that with heparin. Of course, making sure you're doing all your medication checks before you do that. And so then we can go ahead and lock, prescribed amount, clamp, remove, and then we're gonna go ahead and put a disinfectant cap at the end of this. Always being aware of our non-touch non technique. When you're done, completed, make sure you document um, your procedure, your dressing change, your assessment, and um, your flushes, your locking um, fluid, and how the patient tolerated it.